Okay, so what I want to talk about today is just a little bit of theory about uh, 3D objects and, and basically what you could call the quality of a 3D object um, and how that works. Uh, when you're dealing with 3D objects, as I, I stated in the previous demo uh, that I did for you guys, um, you have three basic pieces of any 3D object. You have the vertice, you have the edge, and then you have the face, okay? And your vertices are your points, and your edges are the lines between two points, and then your face is the fill, the surface that happens between uh, uh, all your vertices and your edges when you enclose the shape. Um, and generally speaking, it's considered good form to always have three or four points on a face, no more, and obviously you can't have two and have a face, because then you would just have a line, you would just have an edge. But, when it comes to the quality of an object, let me delete this really quickly. If I add uh, a, a simple UV sphere here, <clears throat> you can see that it kind of looks like a mirror ball. Okay, it's, it, you can see the facets, you can see where the vertices and the edges are. And this is relatively complicated uh, object, but at the same time, it's, it's actually rather low in resolution. Um, <clears throat> and if I take a look up here along the top, it tells me how many faces I have. I've got 512 faces, 482 vertices, uh, and so on and so forth. So it gives me kind of some statistics about the scene up here, or about the object that I'm clicked on. If I go into this and, you know, go into edit mode, and I wanted to smooth it out, I can do so by doing something called subdividing, which actually, when I end up modeling objects, I use subdivision very, very seldomly. Um, but for the purposes of this real quick explanation, it's going to make a lot of sense. So if I hit subdivide, it's going to take each face and divide it twice. Boom. <clears throat> now, it doesn't look like it's any higher quality, but if we then take and we smooth our vertices, couple of times and I tab back out of here you can see how it's starting to get better and better and better and if I were to continue subdividing do two more that was a little nuts we'll just go one more and smooth the vertices again a few more times and tab out in the edit mode you can see how this is now getting to be a much much smoother object so an important concept of this, and this is exactly like a Photoshop file. The more pixels you have in a two-dimensional image, the higher the resolution of the image, and therefore the better it's going to look, especially when the image is printed out larger. So if you want to print a poster, you know, that's three feet tall, like a movie poster or something, you had better have an image that has a lot of pixels. Well, 3D objects are roughly the same in the fact that if you want something to look really smooth you want to have a lot of vertices and if you see here you can see I've got 8,192 8, uh, uh, faces on this and that's a pretty decent amount it's actually not that much but it's a pretty decent amount but notice that if I scale it up to a bigger size now the edges and the vertices and the faces are all bigger and so if I tab out you can again start to see that uh, within the object. <clears throat> so this is just kind of a simple conceptual idea however there's a really cool thing that we can do in Blender to allow us to have a high resolution object without actually having all these vertices because if you look at this this would be impossible to edit it would be really, really hard to edit, short of sculpt mode. But if you wanted to like actually edit individual faces and make this into some sort of a model or something, this would be ridiculously hard to edit. So what we can do is I can actually take and add a cube here. There's a thing called a, a modifier. Modifiers are um, <clears throat> basically like filters. They're filters that change the object in some way, shape, or form. There's a bunch of them. And one of the best ones is the subdivision surface. And when I hit that, you can see it actually takes my rectangle and turns it into a sphere. And if I bump the 
resolution the subdivisions up to a maximum of six, you can see that that looks pretty darn smooth. Okay, and it's made out of a square. So if I tab into edit mode, you can see that that's actually the original shape. And if I were to grab a vertice and start to play with it, it will actually change the way that that works, which is kind of cool, kind of make it egg-shaped or something like that. <clears throat> so this is a way of taking and starting to make objects that are very complicated, you can make them out of simple shapes. So for instance, if I was trying to make a character, um, so I can shift A, I'll just add, uh, <clears throat> I'll start with a plane, actually when I'm making a character, where did it go? There it is. Let's set that back to zero. So it's in the middle of the, uh, um, <clears throat> so then I'll tab in and I'll subdivide once. Then I'll take these four points, I'll hit the S key and scale them up, and I have now kind of, sort of, a round shape by which I can take these and I can extrude and I can start making basically a character. So I, or just, we'll just make one leg, so to speak, but boom, there we go, go up, extrude again. <clears throat> and that may not look like much now, but I can scale it in, make it look more like a calf. Come on up here, here comes a knee. Take these back here, start working on like a calf muscle, you can kind of see that. And you can start seeing how I might have a leg and maybe a foot. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Okay, so I've started to make a foot that's really rough. But then if I take this and I throw my subdivision surface modifier on it and bump it up a couple, you can see how all of a sudden it's really starting to look like the back of a heel and the calf, isn't it? So this concept of resolution and this concept of having more vertices is, is really good because it allows us to create nice, smooth, high resolution, good looking objects. However, it's much harder to edit an object the more vertices it has. So this subdivision surface modifier allows us to do some really cool stuff while being able to edit something that's actually moderately simple. So that's a really good principle of modeling and of making three-dimensional objects in Blender, is you want to keep the mesh simple and use your subdivision surface modifier to allow it to have a higher quality or higher resolution. And you can see that if I turn that off, now it starts to look, you know, like something like a Minecraft character or something like that. Actually, it's still a little bit better than a Minecraft character, but that's beside the point. Um, it's still, you know, it's blocky, but at least it has um, some form. But again, it's not looking all that pretty. So being able to turn this on and model something simple like that is actually really powerful. So does, does that kind of make sense on, the, on the, how the way that that works and how Blender is working with that sort of a thing? That's basically what I wanted to show you today is just that simple idea of resolution and keep it simple. Keep your models simple when you're editing. You keep them very simple and easy and you use a modifier like the Subsurf modifier to make them look nice and smooth. So if you're frustrated as you're playing around in Blender because your object looks really angular and kind of ugly, don't fret, don't worry. There's lots of ways around that. <clears throat>